y'all. Today I am going to show you a fun little hack that you can do to make your regular halter a little more Houdini proof. A lot of us have a halter that we like um, and that we use on our horse with the muzzle, but um, most halters, as you can see here in this photo, fit with the throat latch sitting across their cheekbone, uh, making it really easy for them to just pull right over their ears. So I'm gonna show you a little addition that we can include um, that will help it fit a little bit further back, snug around the smaller part of their neck, well behind that cheekbone and well behind their pole. So uh, check it out. I've got some examples that I'll pop up here as well. And um, you can use some supplies um, that we carry or you might have stuff at home that would work too. So I'll kind of go over all those examples. All right, y'all, this is what our finished product is going to look like. We're basically adding a second throat latch to make everything a lot more challenging to um, pull off and forward. We can cinch this down nice and snug behind their whole um, jaw and the small part of their neck. Um, so it can still be humanely loose, but also, snug enough that they can't pull it forward, similar to how a neck strap or a cribbing collar would fit. So if you are someone that likes to undo your halter from the buckle um, going over and behind their ears, all you're going to need is a strap um, that will connect into your halter. So I recommend um, just getting one of our replacement center face straps. It comes with everything you need and that's the only additional thing that you will need. Um, it's going to be attaching to the little segment that goes between your buckle and your halter ring. This halter has it on both sides um, and the best halters are ones that have little openings to send that through like this one does. Um, you can actually replace the little um, nylon segment with a piece of leather with um, our leather breakaway um, converters. This one already came with this one on there. Um, it's something that we sell on our website. You don't have to have this, but if your halter doesn't have a breakaway feature, this is a great way to add one um, pretty easily and inexpensively. So as long as your halter has um, a spot to send the strap that we're adding around. Um, it's gonna be easiest if it has an opening that we can send it through like that. If it doesn't, that's fine too. A lot of leather halters won't. And this halter has a buckle on each side, but this one here does not. Um, so we would send it around this part and then you are just going to, when I get, get to this part in the instructions, just send it around this part of the crown piece. If you have one of our premium halters, um, you shouldn't need to do this with those unless it doesn't fit far enough back to get it snug. Um, with our premium halter, when we get to that part of the instructions, you would just be sending the strap around this part of the ring. Um, and basically, you won't be relying on our throat latch to keep it snug so you can loosen that area up. You'll be sending it, basically the strap just needs to go around this part of the buckle ring um, behind the throat latch. So when you clip this, you'll need to clip this in front and then clip the other throat latch behind, if that makes sense. And also if you're using our premium halter, you won't need the extra connector if you're doing the throat latch option. Um, but again, if you like to take your halter on and off with just the buckle, all you'll need for this is a replacement center face strap, or if you don't care for using the face strap that comes on your premium halter, you can just remove that and use it. Um, so those are your options. If you are a buckle person, again, you can now go ahead and skip to the easy version. If you are a throat latch clip person like me, um, and you prefer to take it on and off using this clip, you're gonna need a few other things. Um, you're going to need a way to connect a ring or some piece of hardware to the halter. And this is actually one of our muzzle buckle straps, replacement straps, which is a great option. Or you can also use one of these leather breakaways. Um, both of these are on our website. You can also find similar things elsewhere. Um, you're going to need a ring of some kind. Here are some examples. Your ring is just going to need to fit on your little connector strap. So this little three quarter inch D-ring fits great on this, but it wouldn't fit on this. Um, and then you're gonna need a clip. 
and this is a clip I harvested off of an old halter that I don't use anymore. Um, you can find clips at lots of other retailers. Same with your ring hardware. Um, the ring could be a D-ring or an O-ring. It doesn't really matter. Um, if you need help locating one of these, let us know. We're actually hoping to sell kits so you can have like a one-stop shop that gives you your strap, your clip, your ring, and your connector. Um, so depending on when you're watching this, we might have those available. So double check our website. Again, any questions, email us support at gg-equine.com and we'll be more than happy to help you. But once you gather your supplies, um, come back and I will see you in a second to show you how to assemble it. I'm gonna do the easy version first, and yes, I'm doing this on my kitchen floor um, because someone walked off with my tripod. So, um, easy version first. All you need is a strap and a way to attach it back to itself. Because I have a breakaway feature here, I'm not worried about this being breakaway. If you are concerned and want it to be breakaway, all you would need to do is add something like this um, and I can show you how to do that very quickly. Um, so the first, uh, thing that we're going to do is we're going to attach it on the off side. So if you're using this, um, product, you're going to remove the first tri slide buckle and set that aside. We're going to need that later. And, um, you are going to, um, orient your tri slide so the stitching is facing you and the tri slide is down and the rest of the strap is up and your halter is situated so it is um, the correct direction so it's not it's not upside down as I'm looking at it so you're going to and this is way too long um, but we will trim it so basically I'm gonna find this opening right here and I'm gonna slide this through. And again, if you don't have this opening, just put it around there and we'll snug it up really good so it doesn't slide too much. Um, Cause like if you have a leather halter, most of those don't have a big enough opening to slide that through. Um, and I'm gonna slide this through all the way until the metal is um, basically touching, the metal of the tri slide that's sewn in there is touching the halter. And then I'm going to take my tail and slide it through one side of the tri slide. I feel like that's a little bit of a tongue twister. And then I'm gonna slide it through the other side. I feel like this sounds way more complicated than it is. It's really not that complicated. Um, all right. And this is gonna be the same first step as um, doing it the other way if you're using the throat latch clip. Um, also, okay. And if you're using leather and going to do like a Chicago screw back to itself, you would just loop the leather through in the same way, punch your two holes, send the Chicago screw through and secure it like that. Um, and I would just try to make it as snug as possible. So it's not wiggling around a whole lot. Okay. So now I'm going to flip it over. So we're looking at the other side and now I'm going to make sure this is laying flat um, and I'm going to send it through the tri slide and slide that all the way down to where I feel like it's going to go. This uh, strap ends up being pretty short, so this might be way too short, but I'm going to slide it down here and I'm going to leave myself some adjustment and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to send it through. On this, I have an option to send it through here and here. You wanna go a little bit higher, closer to the buckle if you have that option. And you could, if you had like a solid pieces for these little connectors, you could replace both of them with these leather pieces and that would give you additional breakaway and then also a nice little slot to stick this strap through. And then pretty similar to the other side, I'm just going to send the tail through one side and through the other. If you don't have a little opening to secure the strap through, 
just like the other side, you want to slide this buckle up really tight to kind of secure it there so it's not wiggling around a whole lot. And I would recommend doing that anyway. Um, and I'm gonna leave this as is until I get it to my horse and try it on. Once I try it on, I'm gonna leave myself about a three or four inch tail, trim it, singe the end with a match um, or a lighter so it doesn't fray. And then I'm gonna tape the end down, but that leaves me a little bit if I ever need to adjust it. And so here, what we have is a throat latch that sits further back. This nice angle that we've created makes it really hard for them to pull the crown piece forward um, over their ears and kind of helps hold it back where it's supposed to be and makes it a lot more challenging for horses that have a tendency to pull the whole halter off over their head. Um, so there's that option. Um, and then you can take it on and off by using the buckles of the crown piece. If you are like me and you hate doing these buckles on the crown piece and like your halter clips, you're going to move on to this next set of instructions. So you would not have done this here. Um, and with this, you actually need even less uh, length. And if you have any questions of like other types of hardware or where to get stuff, just email us. Honestly, all of this stuff can be found through Amazon, um, like the Chicago screws, the hardware. If you have any old halters knocking around, um, I recommend checking those out to see if you can harvest any like hardware or clips or even like uh, straps possibly. Um, oh, this is a, another favorite of mine, a Conway buckle. This is a really good product to use if you have um, a leather strap you just punch a hole and then you can use it to secure it back to itself really similar to a uh, chicago or yeah similar to a chicago screw but the nice thing about this is it would be e more easy to adjust if you had multiple holes punched and they lay really nice and flat um so i just wanted to have that as an example all right so now if you want to be able to undo the clip to take it on and off we're just going to have to add a clip here. And in order to do that, I'm gonna show you with the muzzle buckle. Um, I'm gonna use my smaller hardware. Um, this is a three quarter inch D-ring, which I believe I bought online somewhere. It's pretty little, but um, I'm actually, I have this set up on the halter I'm using on my horse right now, and it's remained durable and so i'm going to send it through the back keeper around the d-ring and then i'm going to send this buckle through my little slot here and then i'm going to buckle it and i'm going to buckle this pretty snug you could leave it a little longer um i am going to make it pretty short and then send it through the other keeper and then if I was putting this on my horse, um, I would definitely not only tape this tail down, um, but also I would, I would trim it as well. Um, so there's not much stuff sticking out. All right, so now that I have a piece of hardware to clip into, I'm going to um, use basically do exactly what I did earlier, but instead of sending it through the halter, I'm going to send it through my clip. Now this clip is pretty big for that piece of hardware, um, but it's what I had laying around. So um, you can find your favorite clip that you like. Again, easy to find online, um, either on Amazon or if you have a local tack or leather shop, they will typically have lots of these types of things, um, including the Chicago screws, Conway buckles, and probably even these little leather breakaways, and maybe even tri slides, depending on what type of stuff they carry. So basically, I just sent it through and then ran it back through the tri slide, and now I can clip this here. So now, when I go to take it off my horse, he just has two throat latches. So he's got this one, and then I have to undo this one to take it on and off. But I still prefer two throat latches to one buckle. Um, and that's just me, but you have options. Um, and this will allow you to choose the type of clip that you like. 
Um, and then again, once I get this adjusted, I am going to leave myself a couple inches so I can continue to adjust it as needed. And then I'm gonna trim, singe, and tape the tail down. And I'll throw in a few clips here of what this looks like on a horse. But the thing I really love about it is because this rear throat latch is not attached to this um, jaw, uh, under jaw connector piece, when they go down to graze, a lot of times this gets pulled forward and helps them pull everything forward and off. But because this is kind of free floating and angled back, it actually stays back where it's supposed to. And this angle helps hold the crown piece back as well. So it really does a nice job of preventing your horse from removing the halter over their ears. And um, I'll show here some, some videos and maybe some photos of um, some of my horses wearing a setup like this with some of the different options that I showed you here today. So uh, reach out if you have any questions or if you get stuck and we'll be more than happy to help you. But I hope that this little hack helps you and your Houdini.